Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. The Lord be with you. Gracious and loving God, as we gather in this space, fill our hearts and minds with you. Open us to your grace, your mercy, your love. Speak to the depth of our being and form us as your people. We thank and praise you, O God, for your love which has no end. Amen. So, in the Gospel of John, this is the first sign. In the Gospel of John, he's going to periodically give us these signs that are to point to Jesus. Well, here's my issue. If I were writing this Gospel, I'm not sure that I would put changing water into wine as the first sign. Okay? Think about it. We're not talking about just a bottle like, you know, water being made into Mogan David. If you like Mogan David, I'm glad. But, you know, we're not talking about a little thing like that. We're talking about six jars full between 120 and 180 gallons of wine. I'm just not sure this is where I would start to talk about Jesus. Think about it. And did you catch verse 10? Take a look at verse 10 in there if you didn't. Because this one, this one causes me to have another question. The steward tastes this wine that's been brought over by the servants. And the guy gets upset, calls the bridegroom, who knows nothing about this, but says to him, come on. Everybody serves the good wine first and then the inferior. Because you wait until the people are drunk then they won't know they're drinking bad wine. But you've saved a good... So, so at this point, can we assume that the wedding party, everyone's drunk? Again, I'm not sure this is where I would start to tell the story of Jesus. But there's some other info too. At the time, Romans, some worship the idol Dionysius. And Dionysius was the Roman god that was believed to cause the grapes to come about so as to produce wine, and they would drink a whole bunch of wine at their, one of their temples, and they would have an ecstatic ritual time. So Jesus is turning water into wine, and yet we have this out there in paganism. And then what about this, the ritual Jars. I mean, these jars are reserved to use to fill with water so that one can become washed and become ritually clean so you can live Judaism properly. 
What's going on here? Well, maybe John has got something else he's pointing us to. You see, what we start to see in this wedding is Jesus meeting people in real life. Jesus meeting people where they're at. And that grace has left the building and is on the move. In the first chapter of John, in the prologue section, John um, tells us about Jesus. He has this part at the, toward um, verse 15 through 18-ish, where he's talking about John the Baptist pointing toward Jesus and declaring that in this one, Jesus, we have received grace upon grace. And this is what that first sign is pointing to. So a wedding party would be gathered, people would come together, and it was a long process. It was a multi-day celebration culturally, and it was a time when a family would celebrate that base reality of the celebration of life. At a wedding, there was hope for the future, there was joy in the presence, and there was a remembrance of the past. It was a celebration of life. And the couple would host that. The family would host that. It's kind of like having a, a big wedding here going over to the Galvez. We're going to have a big reception, and half the people get in, and they get hors d'oeuvres, and they run out, and there are no more. It would be a bit embarrassing. It would cause shame for the family. To run out of wine at the wedding is not joy-filled. So Jesus meets people in their reality and does something amazing with grace. And whereas an idol was thought to cause wine to come into being, Jesus takes wine and right before them changes it in water and changes it right into wine. There's no mystery. It is at the word of Jesus that elements that they know so well are transformed and ritual purity is, is somehow being questioned in some of this because it's no longer a religious thing. It's rather a tool through which grace flows. Maybe John has it right that the first sign is seeing what does this grace look like except that God meets people where they're at in the celebration, in the living of life, and their grace flows upon grace upon grace. We see God interacting, not housed in some building far off, not at a distance, but right present. Is that maybe why John lets us see what's going on at a wedding in Cana in Galilee? To point us to this Jesus who meets us along where we're at in life with grace upon grace? You see, we will start debating at some point, did this really happen? We'll start going down, well, yeah, you know, we've all heard the joke about the guy who's driving along and there's an open bottle of, of there's an open thing, a container of something in his uh, a cup holder, and the cop asks, well, what are you drinking? Oh, it's just water. And then the guy goes, well, that's not water. And he goes, oh, it's a miracle. Jesus did it again. We make fun of this. We will presumably to get into the argument, can this be? A pastor friend told the story of some college students who were having that kind of a conversation. And the, some of the kids were all about it had to be literally the way it was. And others are saying, I don't know, I, I, th I think there's, we got to look at other things. And this one kid stayed silent. And the college pastor asked that one kid, so you've been quiet, what are you thinking? And here the kid says, I was raised in the home of an alcoholic father. It was rough at times. It was really hard at times. I was watching as my family always was in, in a mess. I know the hurts of what alcoholism can do. I don't know whether it happened the way it was or not. I don't know, but I know I've seen the miracle take place because Jesus 
changed wine into water in my father's life. Jesus' grace moved him from alcoholism into being freed to live without alcohol. I've seen the miracle of grace transforming life. I believe that. I believe John tells us this story to open our hearts to the rest of the story of a God who loves us so much, who comes near and pours grace upon grace into our hearts and minds, who meets us where we're at, not on, in some fake world, but in our real world, with grace upon grace. Where is it that you see that grace flowing in your life? In my life, I can give you a couple examples. One is, my wife is really sweet. My wife, you know, I am not an easy person to live with because I'm demanding. I'll do it on my own. My wife has a way of caring for me that reminds me that I'm loved despite of myself. I received a note in the mail yesterday from a former parishioner in North Carolina, and that note was an act of grace. She sent me her husband's funeral bulletin. I was there with her all night as we waited at Duke Hospital as he was receiving two brand new lungs to him. He, had, he was a victim of Agent Orange in the Vietnam War. And we spent that night waiting and praying and then a whole lot more. And she sends a note just saying, thank you. We have fond memories. I knew you would want to know about Gary. That was a moment of grace reminding me. I know that there are moments of grace in your life. Are we open to that? And daring enough to bold in faith to say, yes, Jesus still changes water into wine and wine into water in real life, that God's grace is encountering us and transforming us. Where will you see grace this week? Amen.